All right, so this video will mainly cover the ideologies that made up the different sides of the Spanish Civil War. The first modern political philosophy to arrive in Spain and attempt to tackle its myriad of issues was that of anarchism. Now, anarchism has many different interpretations, but at its heart is the idea that there should be no formal government, and instead, people should be left to decide matters on their own. Anarchists believe money and power are the diabolical potions that turn a man into a wolf. One of its key founders was a contemporary of Karl Marx and the first international, that was the communist organization Marx helped set up, named Mikhail Bakunin. While Marx and Bakunin agreed that the best situation would be a stateless society, Marx believed that government was necessary at certain points, while Bakunin argued that there should be no government and that workers' council should decide matters. An Italian anarchist who studied with Bakunin then came to Spain in 1868 at the behest of the First International to spread the message of anarchists. The message that land, justice, and equality should be seized by force spread amongst the starving day laborers of Spain. It helped that anarchism had a strong anti-central government message at its core. Within four years of the first anarchist arriving in Spain, there were around 50,000 people in Spain calling themselves Bakunist. Anarchism appealed to those who were anti-central government and also was a strong moral alternative to the Catholic Church. Anarchists at this time were fairly puritanical. They were anti-smoking, anti-drinking. They wanted an end to certain traditional practices in Spain like bullfighting. Anarchism is also inherently a pre-industrial philosophy that uh, there should be a libertarian or stateless communist society. No police, no courts, no money, no taxes, no political parties, no churches, no private property. Basically, communities should be run by the people themselves. And that appealed to those parts of Spain that had a long hatred of both uh, the centralized government and, as well as authoritarianism and religion. Similarly, the idea of shared public utilities fit in with the tradition in parts of Spain like rural villages or fishing communities where equipment was already shared and owned in common. Nets, boats, and pasture land were commonly owned in the countryside of Spain. So it makes sense it caught on, and while anarchism caught on, there were attempts at changing things in Spain, but that was very slow. As anarchism was anti-government, they tended to reject parliamentary politics and favored violent and revolutionary acts. However, they were usually poorly organized and poorly equipped, and so these revolts were crushed by the civil guard, and this was followed by periods of apathy. Assassination became the tool of many anarchists worldwide, and Spain was no exception. Uh, their prime minister was assassinated by an anarchist in 1897. It's worth noting, as this picture is um, depicting here, the U.S. also had its anarchist moment around the same time. In 1910, anarchists in Spain founded the CNT, or the Confederation, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Confederation Nacional <laughs> del Trabajo. Um, this is the, the anarchist trade union they founded. I'll just call it CNT for the rest of this video and the subsequent videos. Um, and essentially this came about because anarchists began to realize they needed to have strikes and other types of... Uh, tools at their disposal in addition to just violence. Um, there was also a sister organization founded for it called the FAI in 1927. Uh, there you can see what it is, but basically this was the political wing of the CNT. We'll talk more about these organizations later. The next one to come to Spain was socialism. A few years after the first anarchist arrived, in 1871, Karl Marx's son-in-law, Paul Lafargue arrived to lay the grounds for a socialist party in Madrid. The Partido Socialista Obrero Español, or PSOE, was founded in 1879. It also had its own workers' union, known as the UGT, um, and that was founded in 1888. Again, while socialist agreed with anarchists and the idea of uh, ultimately a stateless society would be ideal. They tended to favor more parliamentary action than 
uh, just going around the government. Marxists experienced less success in Spain than the anarchists, partially due to the fact that Spain is mostly agricultural, and Marx and the Marxists tended to favor industrialized society and uh, you know a centralized state being necessary. Many miners, steel workers, and others joined socialist groups like the PSOE and the UGT. They tended to believe that socialist reforms should come from uniting with middle class Republican parties to achieve success through parliamentary reforms. Some, including Vice President Largo Caballero of the UGT, wanted strikes and direct actions as well. Now, communism came about in Spain in the 1920s. Uh, following World War I and the economy in Spain doing poorly, along with news of revolution in Russia, this led to the formation of communist parties in Spain that wanted to try and achieve a similar result to Russia. Some members actually wanted to join the common turn. Those that were more radical uh, went ahead and made the Communist Party in November 1921. And by the time of the Civil War in 1936, communism and socialism in Spain were pretty fractured. You had those that wanted the more Stalinist model, those that followed more along the Trotskyist model. The church also was very harshly anti-communist, anti-socialist, uh, as these were you know, inherently atheistic. And in the 1930s, the church would tell stories of miracles in which communists you know, dropped dead after committing a sacrilegious act. So anarchism, socialism, and communism are the main leftist ideologies that had taken hold in Spain by the 1930s, and each had their own resolution for debates that had plagued Spain since the Reconquista. Anarchism favored regional individual power and looked to redistribute wealth by force to solve socioeconomic problems. Socialism and communism favored a more centralized approach that favored parliamentary action. And while those were the main leftist philosophies, it's worth noting there were a couple other uh, rightist, more right-leaning philosophies that looked elsewhere for solutions. There was a fascist party, phalangism as it was called, um, was sort of modeled on Italy and Mussolini. This came about in the 1930s and 1933, coalesced around a guy named Jose, Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera. We'll talk about his dad in the next video, who actually was sort of a short-lived dictator of Spain. Uh, the, the Falange Española was the fascist party of Spain. Falange means phalanx, um, like in the Roman army, you know, this sort of unit that uh, worked together. And Falangists basically desired to follow the model of Mussolini in Italy, Hitler in Germany. You also had two different kind of opposing forces that believed in restoring monarchy in Spain after the establishment of the Second Republic, which happens in 1931. Again, we'll get to that in a second. Basically, there were some in Spain that believed the solution to problems was to go back to tradition and restore a powerful monarchical presence. They disagreed, though, on who should be on the throne. So the Carlist come from, in 1833, King Ferdinand VIII died. His daughter Isabella II inherited the throne, but was deemed too likely to move Spain towards a more enlightened place with democratic reforms. And so some began to support Ferdinand's brother Don Carlos as the rightful heir to the throne. They became known as Carlist, and they existed all the way up until the Civil War, through the Civil War. And they wore that red beret as sort of their their fashion statement? I, I don't know. Um, on the other side, you had those that wanted to restore the line of monarchs related to Isabella, known as Alphonsist, and they also existed through the 1930s.